this is Leslie Ziegler, and I'm here at the Digital Health Summer Summit at UCSF. And I'm sitting here with, uh, you know, a person I would probably consider to be kind of the rock star of the uh, of the event. You know, the sunglasses, the whole. Uh, but please meet Charles Michael Yim, the CEO and uh, founder of Breathometer, uh, which it has been in the press quite a bit for a number of reasons. But um, why don't you tell me a little bit about the company? Yeah, sure. So I'm the founder and CEO of Breathometer. Uh, I started about two and a half years ago, and, uh, we, and essentially what we've built is a breath analysis platform and. A lot of people know about us as uh, the alcohol smartphone breathalyzer company. We debuted on Air Shark Tank. Um, we got a tremendous response from the market, um, and now we're working on other products related to breath. So, kind of as for context, um, there's roughly about 300 biomarkers off the human breath, uh, whereby you can uh, essentially analyze anything as basic as alcohol, but things more advanced like asthma, uh, diabetes, and even lung cancer. Um, so we partnered up with institutions like the Cleveland Clinic, uh, Stanford University, um, being that they have basically first-in-class breath analysis labs. Um, and they've been doing uh, research on breath analysis for over the past couple of decades already. And so there's already been a tremendous amount of groundwork that's already being done for lung cancer, for diabetes. And so we see ourselves really as a tech stack, um, and whereby we can port a lot of these uh, applications over to our, our platform and essentially release it to market, commercialize it. and so a consumer can be empowered by a product like that. Got it. Yeah, and I think, I mean, what an incredible way to start. You know, you, you got your start on Shark Tank. Uh, and you got, I think, aren't you like the only company who's ever had all five sharks invest? Yes, uh, first and still the only. Um, so there's a big difference between um, closing on set versus offset, right? And so, yeah, and I'm pretty proud about it. Um, all five are very engaged, very supportive investors. Um, I would say Mark Cuban being the most, especially because he played lead in the round. Uh, but we are just wrapping up a pretty significant uh, Series A right now um, that's in the tens of millions. Um, so we'll make that announcement probably in the next month or two. That's fantastic to hear. And what do you think, so, you know, these kinds of tools I think typically have this consumer bent. You see things on Shark Tank all the time. I love that this is taking off because A, I think using breath as the, you know, way to pull this information. I'm a total quantified self-geek myself. Um, but I love that you're now really getting into these clinical uh, clinical areas. Do you think that that actually is why you've been able to get all this investment and you've been able to? Yeah, yeah no, definitely. I think uh, our technology is innovative, right? It's, it's leveraging the most powerful computer on a person, which is your smartphone, um, and tapping into something that's never really been maximized. I mean, the last time, I would say, if you want to even consider uh, the market as a breathalyzer market, um, it really hasn't been innovated since the 60s. A lot of people don't know that uh, essentially the breathalyzer was really invented in the 60s and it was at Indiana State University um, and so the government licensed it from them and ultimately created a law enforcement grade breathalyzer but, but since then um, from a consumer standpoint it really hasn't been innovated and in, 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 you know since then and and so what we're doing is we're connecting the you know to the most powerful machine um, on a you know on a person but at the same time mapping it to all the R and D that's been done on the medical side so things like lung cancer diabetes asthma oral health hydration list goes on and on so um, I think because of that yes it definitely contributed to you know bring on the right investors um, I mean obviously working up uh, some things with Richard Branson himself Mark Cuban's involved. Um, also, Bill Gates, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, with Boris. Um, so, uh, it's been pretty fascinating. It's been a wild ride. Um, you know, I used to read books. You know, in in, in, in business school, uh, Mark Cuban and, and Richard Branson and Bill Gates. Like, it's gnarly to say that I'm actually working with them. So, it's it's initially it was very much like a, I guess, an out of body experience, and then it's kind of surreal. But now that you just are in the work and you're doing it, it's it's now we're basically pursuing a mission and it's not about really just one person it's about the team and it's about helping and essentially wanting to revolutionize the digital health space well I know you won't tell me who's leading your round so I won't even ask um, you know, between the launch of the product and getting this funding um, I think I'm it's so refreshing to see someone go at it from this perspective um, you know and really have a grounding in clinical as well as a quantified self so I just um, anything actually for those who couldn't make it today, you know, any advice for entrepreneurs that are that are trying to do maybe not the same thing, but any like one nugget that you think has helped you be really successful? Yeah, I would say a frequent question I'm actually getting here today is, 
the strategy to go to market. So if, in fact, your startup has the opportunity, you know, there are three classes of FDA, right? Medical devices, right? So class one, two, and three. One only requiring a registration approval, so it could take a month or so. Um, two, requiring a 510K, which you can expedite through a fee, um, which could take still at least a couple months and a lot of legwork. And then class three is, um, I said, well, class two. And then class three is um, essentially uh, life-threatening. So like things like diabetes and lung cancer. There's some other breath uh, related companies, breath analysis companies have come out and they've died. Um, and the reason being is they went straight for the, you know, uh, for, for, for the class three device, the lung cancer or the diabetes. But I think from us and where I think some others can borrow from is if you can, if you have the opportunity to go for a class one, go for the class one, build up your brand, capitalize, develop your team, get your R&D out there. Um, you, you, the, the key is at the end of the day, yes, you want to you know, do something great in digital health, but you're a company at the end of the day and you have bills to pay. And there's a lot of digital health companies, they just raise and raise and raise and raise. And, uh, you know, like our competitor is Adamant Technologies, is Coastal back three years in. Um, they were going straight for uh, diabetes and uh, three million bucks in, or five million bucks in funding, three years, but not one dollar revenue. Coastal said sorry. And, uh, you know, I brought over some of the key team members from that company. Um, and now, you know, for instance, Tim Ratto is our head of, v, uh, our head of R&D. He's a VP of R&D. Um, but point is, is that very much can define whether your company is a success or not. Because as I'm sure as you know, uh, the main compelling reason why startups fail is not because, you know, there was maybe a lack of expertise or, uh, I would say, uh, product to market uh, in terms of application and fit. It was more so there wasn't enough time. Um, and so if you can extend that timeline and make sure that your probability or your risk decreases, but your probability of success increases, um, that's the key. So if you have the opportunity to go class one, go class one, and then roll out the rest of your product roadmap as you see fit. Smart. I wish you'd been around a couple years ago when Rock Health was getting started. It was, uh, I mean, we're all learning together, but, um, you know, I really congratulate you on the funding and all the great press and, and for, you know, being here, which is, uh, you know, I think a really great inspiration for entrepreneurs who are both trying to do it and big companies, frankly, who need to see that it's possible to build something that looks, you know, looks like a consumer device but actually has these important clinical um, applications. So um, where can people find you online, Twitter and all that good stuff? Awesome question. Um, we're on Facebook, so you can go to our Facebook.com slash Breathometer page. Um, you can also find us on Twitter, just Breathometer. It's like spelled like breath o meter but it's pronounced Breathometer like thermometer. Um, so yeah, Twitter and Facebook, you can find us there, and uh, we're pre pretty responsive to our audience. Awesome, I'm sure you are. And uh, sounds like you guys will be hiring pretty soon, so maybe uh, also a call for uh, resumes. Yeah, definitely. We'll be uh, doubling, if not tripling, our size in the next six months. So we're about sub-20 employees, and we'll be uh, growing pretty quickly, and we are looking for engineers. Isn't, aren't we all? Aren't we all? Well, thank you so much for being here today. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been awesome, and uh, it's been an awesome event. Thanks.